Look, Labor governments say they want more affordable housing, but much of what they do makes it more expensive. Take the latest sweetheart deal between Labor and the unions. In this case, new rules put in place by Queensland Labor for any builders wanting to do major work with the Miles government. As reported, the deal locks in pay rises of 5% a year for the next four years. This is for construction workers who already have a minimum base rate of pay at at least $100,000 a year for a 36-hour week. Then there's double pay for any overtime and two rostered days off every month, in addition to the four weeks of annual leave and all that other special leave that's now included in most deals. Then there's a distant construction site allowance. Well, that's $1,000 a week if you work on a project 50 kilometres or more from your employer's address. And a scaled site allowance for bigger projects of up to 11 bucks an hour or an extra $400 a week. As well, all work stops when the temperature hits 35 degrees or when the temperature exceeds 29 degrees and the humidity tops 75%. Any worker required to work in the rain, well, they get paid double. And workers who use their own phone will be paid a technology allowance of another $100 a week. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. Naturally, union delegates will be provided with their own office, says the deal, and allowed to address their fellow workers for at least half an hour every time they turn up on site. Now, building bosses, they think this will add 20% at least to the cost of government projects in Queensland that will inevitably flow through to other building costs. This is all part of Labor's agenda to change the way we live, to make us renters rather than owners, to, to be on public transport rather than drive our own cars and to give up meat because cattle herds are contributing to climate change. And this is hardly what Labor supporters mostly voted for at the last election, but it's what we are now all getting under Labor governments.